Hey there, welcome back to the Big Board. Going to take a look at Hellenes, not Hellenes. <laughs> take a look at Hegemon. We're going to discuss the Hellenes. We're going to discuss the Greek states. And I thought it might be good to put this particular game in context. Uh, subject to how far we get along with it. You know, I've, I've done a little bit of reading over on the right there. I've kind of skimmed those books. I haven't obviously read in massive detail. This particular game, uh, Hegemon, covers the uh, activities and the campaigns from 339 BC through to, I think, the end of 338 or thereabouts, the, the sort of winter, winter time, which culminated in the uh, Battle of... Uh, uh, Chanaria or Canaria, depending on how you pronounce it and spell it. There are a variety of uh, anglicized spellings and a variety of uh, Greek transliterations that have occurred and uh, transcriptions that have uh, gone from one language to another. But the important thing about this game and what it's trying to do is that there's actually a lot of backstory to all of this. And so I thought I might try and, if I can articulately or semi-articulately crystallize a lot of the the goings and comings of the massive number of Greek states and key factions and try and crystallize why a few things happened, right? And why this war came about and how Philip II ended up uh, leaving a legacy to his son that will allow the, the state of Greece or the country of Greece to be, you know, in essence formed. Uh, he, he kind of bound all the city-states together, but Philip laid the foundation for that. So we kind of got to wind all our, our shysa all the way back to 359 BC. Uh, the Macedonians and the Athenians never really got along very well. They'd always been at, at uh, odds with each other. There'd been a couple of uh, 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 wars called the Sacred Wars. In fact, there'd been three up until around about that time. And basically those wars, if we looked at them in today's context, would be about controlling the, the voice of reason or the voice of approval from the Delphic Council. Although it had, it had a different name. Uh, Delphoi has the, 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 the Delphic Temple in it. And that uh, the, the oracles there were used and abused, basically, uh, and bribed to share favor and omen that was uh, in line with political aspirations. So he who controlled the Delphic uh, group here, the, the temple here, and uh, there's a council that's kind of associated with it that has a big ass long name that I can't pronounce. If you could control that, you could influence the goings on and what was right and what was wrong and cause people to go to war and all that sort of good stuff. So basically, Thebans, Boeotians, and Athenian, uh, the Attic, uh, Attica groups, the, the, the Athenian city-states, all these guys were at it. They were all arguing and fighting and trying to uh, gain advantage of one over the other. And the, the Thebans were looking for their own version of hegemony as well, or hegemon. And, uh, and Philip saw an opportunity to take advantage of the situation by coming to the aid of various factions. That went on uh, through the, the Third Sacred War for some period of time. And, you know, there's uh, other minor wars that go on in between. Uh, he had to go and deal with some issues up in uh, the northern reaches of the Greek states, and he had to, uh, you know, come to meet, make make some uh, accommodations along the way. Uh, in fact, uh, in here there was a uh, he he placed a regent or a young lad on the throne here, uh, forced his father out, uh, and the son was coming of age and uh, in Amphissa and. Uh, and, and Philip sort of uh, stole, uh, stole the march here and, and inserted a, a vassal here and that protected his flank when he went on down into Focus and these other areas down in here to uh, take on the Epriots. The Byzantian, Byzantians got involved at some point. So there's a lot of stuff going on, right? Fast forward or through the time to 339 BC 
and the this this campaign that's being played out here kind of rolled out in two or three different stages. The first was uh, ca uh, moving forces uh, from the way up here in the north down into uh, this Heraclea is right here, uh, the state of Doris, and uh, uh, I can't even pronounce that word there, so we're going to leave that guy alone. But I'm trying to find cities or states you might know. Uh, Nicola, you wouldn't know those necessarily unless you're into the Greek stuff. Here's Chonaria here. Uh, so moving forces down, taking his new, newly armed, newly trained army using sarissas, which were new, relatively new at the time, a new concept. And he basically was uh, adapting and modifying uh, what he had learnt from the Thebans, uh, Epinomendos, he was uh, one of his tutors. Uh, I think, I'm not sure whether he was a guest with him for an extended period of time or some form of um, visiting hostage. You know, that was how they would do that. Families would send a son. Uh, well, he learnt at uh, Epinomendos's foot, right, uh, at his uh, side and learnt about his brilliant tactical innovations with deep and uh, large phalanxes and uh, using oblique uh, and refuse flanks and things like that. So he took that concept and then he took the concept of more heavily armored and heavily weaponized cavalry. Uh, you know, the first heavy cavalry were probably really used by him effectively and archers as well. So he had, you know, three three different weapon types to be deployed and uh, tactics to be used. And so anyway, he brings this army down. He gets into a few skirmishes around Heraclea. He faints down the pass here and then heads, up, heads on across to Am Amphissa and then sends Parminian off, uh, off this way to the uh, far left-hand side of the map over to here. And this is uh, now Pakatos. Pakatos. Paktos, <laughs> and uh, in this particular game when we're playing, we're just in the middle of turn one. Uh, the Aetolian uh, allies have uh, have turned on for uh, the Macedonians, so that's a good thing. In turn one, in this late summer, they'll be able to uh, put pressure on here, and Parmenian may not have to go this way uh, this particular time. Second phase of this particular campaign then once uh uh philip had kind of fainted this way came around through amphissa down through here and put a lot of pressure on um uh, alitalia alitalia here and uh this uh, the focus this trail from delphoi uh, which is the delphic temple here uh and then the uh the Athenians and the Thebans sort of rallied here at Conoria, and this is where the uh, pivotal battle occurred. And there was, uh, you know, obviously a significant defeat of the Athenians here and the Thebans here. But there was still uh, the will to fight on, and it was only through, you know, political machinations and uh, some some further conflict that went on that we were actually able to resolve the you know, resolve the war and that's and then see uh, Philip left in charge of course then you know sadly Philip dies at some point later on uh, doesn't then get to go and execute on his uh, wish to seek his revenge against the Persians but uh, nevertheless makes the peace and I'm just trying to see if I can find anything else that I want to share with you here from some of these articles. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, in a second, yeah, basically the Philip was elected hegemon and uh, the Hellenic states declared war on Persia for offences that perpetrated 150 years earlier, and Philip Philippos was now ready to invade the Persian lands in Anatolia. So, uh, basically, 
you know, the result of the Conorian battle here was the Conoria battle was that uh, he was able to use this this council and uh, this uh, these other uh, bring people to the table and force a peace. So it was a pretty interesting situation. We'll see how this plays out. There's some mechanics in here that we'll talk about uh, a little bit later on that we need to explore. And we will uh, see if there's a game here that allows us to explore the situation uh, effectively, right? So that's all I had for you. A little, little history back and a little background, a little summary. We'll talk to you guys soon. We'll have a lot more coming on this game, I hope, assuming it all plays well. Ciao.